Okay, let's get started. Um, uh, so, hello everyone. It's so very uh, uh, pleasure to have this chance sharing uh, with you about our works uh, around graph and the uh, large language module and how we got uh, the, the development uh, environment boost with the Docker extension. Uh, so, uh, this is Wei. Uh, I'm the contributor of the um, the the open source uh, graph database called uh, Nebula Graph, and I'm also the the author of the um, the graph plus uh, AI related projects uh, like Nebula Graph DGL and Nebula Graph AI Suite. Um, I'm also uh, 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 like top ten uh, contributor to the uh, orchestrator project called Llama Index. So. Um, um, uh, I enjoyed uh, building public and share things around the uh, language module and uh, graph. So feel free to uh, reach out to me uh, in GitHub and Twitter. So uh, today our topic will uh, start from uh, some backgrounds on uh, what is graph, why we uh, need graph or knowledge graph. Uh, I will give a brief introduction of, of our uh, project called Nebula Graph. And then I will share um, some interesting uh, exploration and our research um, on how a uh, graph can help um, uh, the uh, direct paradigm uh, of the uh, language module uh, um, way of working. And finally, I will uh, introduce the, our uh, Docker extension. I'm also the author of this project. So um, uh, what is graph? Why do, we, uh, to, why do we need to care about graph? So uh, the definition, uh, the graph term in, in, in the sense of the graph theory uh, comes with an old, uh, old question called the seven bridge uh, problem uh, where uh, in, in uh, Asian, uh, in an old city in, in Europe, uh, we have uh, a rivers across the city and uh, that break the lands into uh, different pieces and we have seven uh, bridges out there. So the question there was, um, is there a way that you want to traverse all of the seven bridges, but we, without uh, repeating them and uh, traverse only one for once? So uh, the spoiler of the answer is no. But when people started to uh, get this uh, result conclusion proven, uh, so in the initial paper that study on this problem, so they start to abstract this, uh, this into, into a mathematic uh, problem. So the way they are doing this uh, abstraction was to, you know, map the, the lands or islands into the, the small dots or uh, we call vertex. And uh, the bridges will be abstracted as uh, the line connecting them or the edge. So um, in terms of graph theory, a uh, graph is just uh, a set of vertexes and uh, uh, edges connecting those vertexes. So, but uh, why do we need to, you know, people, why we people are study, uh, studying uh, around uh, graph? So, uh, actually, uh, graph is already uh, underneath enable a lot of um, things in our uh, real world. So, one of the first one I want to share is uh, uh, called a knowledge graph. So, knowledge graph was a term invented by Google. So, this like decades before, when they started to handle a certain type of, uh, of searching, like you can search keywords and that's, that works fine with uh, you know, the traditional search way uh, you are setting uh, the inverted uh, index just like Elasticsearch. But uh, when people are asking things like uh, the age of a celebrity, right? So how do we do so with the inverted uh, uh, index? But it's not doable. So the way that um, Google was trying to fix that uh, was to set up uh, a system called the knowledge graph. So the ideas come from a, a older term called a semantic network. So literally they just put the entities of the knowledge into the nodes in the graph and the, the edge is just the relationship between them. For example, you put um, uh, one celebrity, celebrity, uh, celebrity uh, as an entity and uh, you can, it has a, a, was born on and to another year and uh, that's just one uh, uh, small uh, um, edge and uh, vertex in, in the knowledge graph. So, and actually in, in Google, if we search some certain things and we, we will have some uh, cars 
uh, in the in the right side, like we search MCU Nebula, we have something about Nebula. So this is also powered by the, the knowledge graph underneath. And another use case uh, will have more sense on how graph works. So this is a typical use case in recommendation system. So um, think of a very uh, you know toy version of uh, Netflix, and we are holding the system to uh, recommend movies to our new users. So imagine this user have already watched a couple of movies and, uh, and uh, rated some of them high. And we can go from those nodes and reversely uh, on similar uh, uh, edge. So we will reach out other users that share similar uh, you know, interests to the similar movies. And then we'll go from there to reach out other nodes that's also rated high by those candidates that share similar tastes, but uh, those movies are not directly connected to our user. So that's a you know, uh, simple version per man's uh, recommendation system. Uh, so another case is in real world, uh, we, 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 our recommendation system would be a complex system, and many times it's, a, it's a, a black box, but the graph here can also help because we can set up such graph and we can get the user and the, the, you know, the, the recommendation candidates, and we can do a fine pass. Uh, this is a typical graph uh, matching pattern. So in that case, you will have generated reasoning of the uh, you know, recommendation uh, results. So that's, uh, you know, the graph can also enable interpretable uh, recommendation. So yeah, and we also see graphs in social networks, so imagine uh, in LinkedIn, you will have your uh, second degree friends. You can have some uh, recommended new uh, friends. So th it, they could be, you uh, have share uh, many mutual friends with you, but you are not connected yet. So, and you can have some uh, graph insights from the, you know, social network uh, graph. And come to the, you know, the, the cloud native or visualization or SRE. Uh, uh, domain, so we can put all of the things in your infra in, in one graph. So in that way, you can have a lot of interesting benefits, like you can propagate your uh, states, like you have one hypervisor, and it has a you know a security issue or a disk issue high load, and you can propagate this alarm or state uh, or security concern across the whole graph uh, immediately, and you can also like do some. Uh, graph-based algorithm, like there are some algorithms that help to detect the clustering in your data. So some of them that sit closely in some sense of, uh, you know, a graph algorithm. And you can pick some of the nodes in the whole graph to treat them as more uh, important ones than others. So in case that node comes with alarm, so you can treat them in uh, other severity. So that's only one, you know, one case of graph can help in, in this domain. So we can also set up something like a data lineage, so track your lineage of your, all your data assets, or your, your, your column, your data sets, your uh, DAG workflows, so they, they can all be connected and inspected in a graph view in a uh, you know, real-time uh, fashion. So this is another uh, um, use case in, in the uh, fraud detection or risk management. So either you are, you are running a, you know, Immerse bank or a content website, there are patterns of the fraud, and if you don't manage, you, you don't control them, uh, there could be mess. So the pattern of fraud can can be um, normally uh, uh, expressed by certain uh, type of graph pattern. For example, this one, this device or this uh, IP address were connected to a, a bunch of huge numbers of uh, other events or create posts by different users. So this pattern can be recommended, uh, re recognized as a, you know, a high risky uh, um, uh, situation. So also you can, you can have one node that's marked as a black one. And uh, when you have a new uh, post or new transaction on, on e-commerce, so maybe in three or four hoops they are connected so you can have a chance to detect them and prevent this transaction in real time. So this is a, you know, a very common uh, graph use cases. And when we come to manufacturing, you, you know, non, the non-digital uh, 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 real cases, uh, this is the example of the car manu manufacturing uh, um, 
uh, supply chain case. So you can put the features, the module, the components, the suppliers, everything in one group, in one uh, graph. So uh, the insights can be inspected uh, in a way that we, we couldn't imagine. So it's a very interesting uh, way to get insights and uh, set up your uh, um, uh, set up your features of your pro service providing that we couldn't imagine without uh, you know the graph. So there are actually a lot of other use cases that I won't dive into, but uh, in, the, in the final ones, I want to put this. So this is a use case that uh, the graph can help when we are setting up a language module-based uh, application. So I will dive into some details on how this could help, uh, you know, interestingly later. But before uh, that, I want to quickly uh, uh, continue another background on the graph database. So maybe many of us are already familiar with, uh, with that, but uh, so, you know, to d decide whether to bring uh, yet another database in our system, you know, can be tricky. And uh, here are maybe are some of the most, uh, you know, uh, concerned uh, uh, reasons. So one of the reasons is uh, the graph database can enable the query on graph, the, you know, the graph sense of data in the graph se uh, semantics. So what does that mean? So for example, if as the, 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 the pattern I mentioned in, in the recommendation system, you want to find the path of the two to, to have the reasoning of why you recommend this to the user. So this is a typical, uh, you know, e uh, easy uh, version of a, a graph query in the graph world, but it's relatively hard in your tabular database. So ideally, you can put things, even if it's a graph uh, data, in tabular way in the RDBMS, but uh, when you want to query them, it's really hard. So the, the the, the upper side, uh, the downside of, uh, of the uh, query is uh, just a fine path between two nodes in one graph in the arbitrary uh, type of uh, edge, edge types. So, but the up, above one was one, uh, you know, the equivalent query in C core. So that would be a disaster in many cases. So, so this is just, a, you know, a, a beginning version of a graph query pattern. So another reason is uh, there's a fun fact that uh, RDBMS doesn't uh, you know, perform well in the relationship, uh, you know, the, the graph-wise relationship uh, traversal. So I will give you a, a, a demo on, uh, you know, demonstrate why is that. So imagine um, this is, a, you know, RDBMS. So when we are doing a typical graph traversal from one point to another, so we are just uh, this, you know, the Snow Brothers who jump from one stage to another. So that's a join. And when we join to another, uh, uh, when we join to another uh, 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 table, we want to walk, all, uh, walk on, uh, run all the way uh, from one to another point to find your, you know, next related connected node. So this doesn't scale because it's highly related to the data scale because the data are uh, sorted in a way, you know, based on your uh, uh, your. your uh, key. So when you're one, one doing the graph traversal, that will be extremely ex expensive. So we can do some, uh, you know, hacks to mitigate it. So we can, you know, like uh, use some magic to run faster or, uh, you know, throw the, the snowballs, uh, you know, far uh, further. But uh, that's a mitigation, not a solution. So your, when your data is, you know, scales growth uh, in, in a higher, you know, range, uh, sometimes it's a difference between you can query patterns in like half a second versus half an hour. So that's not accepted in, in, in many graph-wise uh, use cases. So think of uh, graph database is, uh, you know, the green bottle of the magic so that you can literally fly in from one point to another. So think of that. Uh, closely to O1 effort when you're doing one hop of the graph traversal. And that basically doesn't matter how your data scales. And uh, it's relatively cheap in one hop of graph query. So in real world graph query, there could be multiple hops. And uh, that make a lot of uh, differences. So this is uh, why we need a, a graph database. I hope that makes sense. So uh, quickly, uh, marketing time. Why we need uh, yet another project? So why do we need Nebula Graph? So uh, Nebula Graph was designed uh, to be day zero as a distributed uh, architecture. So it scales 
perfectly, and uh, so not perfectly scale uh, well. And uh, so when uh, so this is a picture that's showing uh, there is a small ship in the river. So when we want to make the make it back, so we just uh, p uh, one or two people to push it back. So this is uh, uh, if you re recall, this is like two years ago. We have a container ship stuck in the you know in the blocked the blocked the uh, world's transportation for months. So similar, uh, some problem can seems uh, look similar, but the solution could be, you know, totally different. So Nevergraph was something uh, built for the you know hyperscale like uh, hundreds of billions of vertexes or trillions uh, uh, level of edges. And uh, yeah, it's uh, distributed and uh, it's designed to be cloud native and open source from D0. Okay, we, we come back to our main uh, 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 topic. So how uh, Graph can help in the uh, language module. So, uh, the, the most commonly used pattern that we want to, uh, you know, set up a language module based application was called in content learning or a RAG par uh, paradigm. So, RAG refers to uh, retrieval augmented generation. So, the word uh, looks fancy, just in case uh, we are not aware of that. So, the process of a, a, a RAG is just to do the retrieval on your private data before you are calling the uh, you know, generation or calling the language module to sync sense your uh, final uh, solutions or answers or your next hoop your, of your uh, of your uh, React pipeline. So uh, the idea is that you know language module forever changed how we want to set up a smart application. So previously we have to you know train a module to enable some some kind of relatively smarter uh, automation tasks. Uh, to do so, but which language module we can just you know, you know use the prompts. But in real world, sometimes we 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 not we not just uh, pre prepare the prompts to to let the language module help us do something. We have to also provide it uh, the concept uh, the the contents the private data of the domain knowledge. So in practice, the way that RAC uh, is doing it's just that we. Pre pre prepare or index our private data when we are doing the in indexing phase. So during the query time, we we send the uh, we send the task and comparing with our you know index data to f retrieve the data that we needed in certain queries or certain questions. So then uh, the language module have the you know the capability of content learning to you know synthesize our questions. And in practice, the way that we indexing things are the, you know the, the the narrow definition or the the most common use the fundamental method is called split and embedding. So embedding is you know just a, a, a machine learning way to mapping uh, you know real world uh, things into a vector sense. So in this vector space, every uh, node or every every uh, vector represent one uh, entities and. Uh, the, how closely they are represent how uh, semantically, uh, you know, closer, uh, how similar uh, they are. So with this concept, we can um, split our private data into small chunks and um, create the embedding vectors for all of them. So when we are doing the query time, we can create a vector uh, expression, a pre representation of the task in the same uh, embedding module, so that we can semantically search the related data or chunks of data to enable that. So this is the, how the RAG paradigm works. But there are, you know, there are challenges because it's, for now, it's really easy. We can use like four or five lines of code to set up your QA robot, uh, robot with your um, own data, with just with, uh, you know, language module and maybe launching our Lama index. Uh, it's perfect for uh, you know a fancy demo, but uh, when it comes to w when we push further to have a production ready you know uh, uh, requirements, it's really hard. We have a lot of things to do. So one of the reason uh, of that comes from the the, by the nature of the way we are doing the retrieval. retrieval. So when we are uh, doing the split of the data, so this is the data that we want to you know refer. From. So we need to split them into small chunks, but this split have a strong assumption that 
what's the size of your trunk? Like, uh, imagine we are doing um, a QA system based on a book about Steve Jobs, and we put every page of the data in one trunk. We, we, we create the, you know, the, uh, the summary, so underneath is just the embedding of each, uh, each page. When we are asking about, so tell me something about Steve Jobs and Apple, so we create the embedding of this uh, questions as well. So we are searching in, in the vector space on, uh, on uh, Steve and Apple. So imagine Apple, um, the things about Apple were uh, lies on you know, uh, page one and page two. So there are a couple of uh, massive ma information on page one and page two, but there could be other information pieces spread in other pages. For example, here is a one sentence which is about Steve and F. Very important, but, but there's only one line of the you know, information in this page. So in this case, the split doesn't work. So you, you can fail to retrieve the, inform, uh, the important piece of knowledge uh, when it's you know, fine-grained spread in, in, in other pages or trunks. So uh, another uh, thing by nature that's a challenge of this approach is you actually, by nature, uh, you know, break the interrelationship, inter interactions between the information in, in, a, in a whole, because our knowledge is some, somewhat like a tree or graph. They have con connection, not a linear uh, fashion. So we just linearly split them and uh, you know, structure them. So this, by nature, can, can, can lose the information of this global context. So that's one of the source uh, you know, we generate, we contribute to the hallucination. Another, another uh, challenge here is about the embedding itself. So normally we are uh, creating the vector representations with uh, you know, general purpose embedding. So the general purpose embedding is, it works in most cases, but uh, it's not aware of our you know, domain knowledge. Sometimes we have terms or knowledges with the, every word you can recognize, but if you're not uh, a domain expert, you are not aware of what they actually mean. And uh, so the, the problem here is the embedding was based on the, you know, the literal, the, the common sense way of the, you know, semantic placing on those information in the, in, in, in the space. So, so in the left side, this is an example we encounter in, in real world that uh, you want to set up a QA uh, chat board related to some you know, e-commerce use cases. And people are questioning about insoluted in, in cup, but so in the embedding uh, space, the system considered the insoluted greenhouse are related, but we can understand why they're related. So technical speaking, the, the token, the two keywords are you know, in, in a lot of common and they even look close, closer, right? But uh, as a human, we know when we are questioning about one of them, we don't care about the other. So that's a, a, a typical situation that embedding can cause you know, hallucination in the retrieval phase. So um, you know, the way out here is uh, we can create, we can fine tune and make, make our embeddings more aware of our real world problem. But sometimes the embedding fine tune is you know, complex and uh, you know, costly. So we can some, somewhat mitigate with the you know, nebula graph. Sorry, sorry, the, 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 the knowledge graph. So, the intuition that we are uh, started working on this was, uh, you know, when we are setting up the language module-based applications, we are actually dealing with knowledge. So, knowledge graph is not in the picture; it's not normal, right? So, knowledge graph can help in some way. So, it's because one of the reason is a knowledge graph by nature it's a refined version and fine grain the segmentation of your knowledge sources. Yeah, and also it pursues the inter inter interactions between the, you know, between all the, uh, you know, entities of the nodes. So that by nature, you know, can, can help us mitigate the, the, the problem introduced by the split. And also the interconnections in, in your knowledge graph, if you are, is properly set up, it always can pursue, persist the no, domain knowledge. I will give you an example demo uh, later as well. So um, and here is how we want to, you know, mitigate those problems and uh, we just uh, so we, we we are still in the um, 
paradigm of the RAG, the in content learning. So when we are doing indexing, we not just create embeddings and vector stores uh, of your data, we also extract the data from the, your raw uh, unstructured data and set up into, into a, a knowledge graph. And the, when we are doing the query, the retrieval uh, phase, uh, we not only finding the huge chunk or big chunk of knowledge with the you know, vector search, we also extract the key entities and relationships of, of your task or question, and we find them towards our uh, you know, knowledge graph, and that could be, think of that as a subgraph in a, in a whole graph, and that could be your actual uh, contents to help you uh, uh, together generate the final uh, uh, results. And here is some, uh, uh, some small demos. So in this demo, I set up a data source from a Wikipedia page. It's related to the Guardian of the Galaxy uh, Volume 3, my favorite movie in this year. So uh, we are setting up a, a, a knowledge graph towards them, and we ask things about uh, maybe something about Rocket or Lila. And underneath, so this is part of the retrieved uh, the knowledge sentence. So it's underneath a, a subgraph. We will have a visualized version later to show you a more idea. And then we, we combine all those information as the content to learn how we want to answer this question. So this is the simple version of the graph uh, rag. And uh, yes, and, but, but in real world, we, we, we consider uh, purely a graph rag doesn't work well because uh, knowledge graph is not uh, it's not automated way or it's not the only way you want persist knowledge because the density of knowledge is not always that you know high so in the unstructured data in the large chunk of data there are some details that we care as well so we we want to uh, the, the, the benefit uh, the, the perfect way to do so is to combine the two so uh, yeah I will demonstrate how they perform later and this, uh, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, this is uh, how the uh, graph rack works in a visualized way. So, uh, so when we're asking something and we want to retrieve the re re related things from graph, so we will get a subgraph uh, as something like this. And then we send sense a problem, since the answers uh, based on that. So this is another uh, uh, demo that I want to share you. Uh, is how we, uh, you know, we try to evaluate how this works together with the vector. So this is an example. We uh, set up a data source from M M Wikipedia about the science event 20, uh, uh, 20, uh, 2023. So we ask a question about um, the science problem uh, about NASA. And uh, we have three types of retrieval and uh, generation. So the first column is purely uh, done from the vector search, the embedding way. And uh, it, it, the answer is very rich and correct. And uh, the third column is the pure graph. And as I mentioned, uh, the information was quite, uh, you know, not that rich, but it's also uh, um, correct. But when we combine the two, we will find interesting findings here. So think of the, the question about uh, Steve and uh, Apple. So Apple, the knowledge about Apple can be spread in a fine-grained way. So we can, from this example, we can see, so the, the, uh, the strong line uh, is a knowledge piece that's not retrieved by vector, but it comes from the graph. So when we combine two, we will have a better uh, performance when we are pursuing you know, the, the qualities. So another, uh, the final uh, example here is about hallucination, uh, you know, by nature comes from the, the, the embedding. Uh, so this is uh, the similar data set uh, asking uh, things about uh, um, the guardian of the galaxy. And we, we tried to uh, uh, mock up a question that does exist in the movie, but looks like if you did the movie, uh, you make this part of the movie. Uh, and uh, we are asking uh, about this long question to the vector uh, with the retrieval from the vector DB. It comes with uh, you know a whole uh, uh, hallucination. But when we are do so towards uh, uh, the knowledge graph, uh, it comes strictly to let us know there is no related thing about this question. So eventually we set up a cross check mechanism to uh, you know we are doing retrieval in, in, in parallel of the two approach. When 
uh, in certain questions, only one of them has a, you know, uh, a retrieve uh, result, and the other has is empty. Uh, we will enable our double check process with, uh, from both of the. So in that case, we will mitigate such uh, hallucination. Yeah. So yeah, and uh, everything I mentioned above are uh, can be you know reproduced locally, and I uh, I upstream everything that we can do with this approach to the uh, open source community. So with, uh, for now with Llama index, you can do the graph REG just like with three lines of code. So this is, the first line is about the, the indexing time. So you can, with one line of code, so you know, create a knowledge graph and vector uh, embedding from a certain, you know, type of documentations or, uh, you know, they, are, they have a, a bunch of uh, supported data uh, format. And the second line is just create a query engine. So on top of that, you can do the uh, uh, graph or a rag. And this is the uh, line that you want to actually ask a question. Yeah. So uh, the final topic was about Docker. So the problem that we are facing is, as I mentioned, so never graph itself. The, the database itself is, uh, you know, distributed projects, you have a multiple components in all. And that's only for the graph query. So we have our, our, also other projects like the AI suite, um, which is based on the Spark GraphX. It's yet another distributed system. So how we want to make everything up and ready to our, you know, data scientists or, you know, in graph uh, case, a lot of user of graph database isn't even uh, uh, c uh, computer science based. They, they could be risk uh, expert uh, or you know supply chain experts, they still want to use you know graph database. So it's really hard for them to you know to use the command line to use or compose on their you know Windows or Mac OS desktop. So uh, that's where the you know the Docker extension helps. So I think that Docker extension is just uh, you know another step that the Docker team was doing. You know previously they just put C group, namespace, everything in uh, you know in a really good uh, way of abstraction to enable us to you know enjoy all those technologies in an elegant way. So, but Docker extension is something you know you can put everything in a server side, in a Linux side, in a distributed fashion, just in you know in a graphic uh, non-command line fashion. So with that, we can uh, we can just uh, uh, in, in any uh, desktop operating system in the Docker desktop. So this is all, all you need. And for the non-tech guy, this is in, install yet another software. So you, in the de uh, extension mar marketplace, you, you can just search Nebula. And you can you know, install the uh, Nebula Graph extension just like hundreds or thousands of other applications which is underneath require a lot of different components work together. So, and just with, with one click, you can have really a lot, a lot of different components, uh, like uh, you know the graphic uh, UI, the uh, the graph query, uh, and uh, the Jupyter environment with everything set up already. So with that, uh, just in uh, five minutes, our community, uh, you know, users. No matter what background they are, they can leverage all the benefits, all the magics. Uh, the community make it possible. Just so very easy. So uh, I am the, uh, also the author of this uh, extension. So I actually make an interesting hack on this to enable optionally a workload to be installed. So uh, if you are interested in that, uh, check out this uh, repository of the extension code as well. So I think. That's the, uh, everything I want to share today. So graph uh, is something related to vertex and edges, and uh, the, the graph query can be typically uh, some type of uh, graph-wise pattern matching, and that requires uh, yet another database to enable your real-world problem so, uh, called a graph database. So a nebula graph is something uh, excellent in the you know, graph data in scale. And uh, uh, the graph can help language module patterns when we 
doing the rack. And uh, thanks to uh, Docker extension, we can you know, try everything just uh, in, uh, in five minutes. And this is the uh, uh, slide uh, of this uh, um, URL of this, this slide. And actually, I, um, I put some other uh, you know, details, uh, information in some, in some URLs of this slide, so if you're interested in. Yeah, and uh, feel free to uh, talk to me uh, about graph and uh, you know how graph can help language modules. Yeah, I think. Do we have uh, questions, please? Yep. Ah, you are. Wow. Thank you. So one of the doubts that I have is like it was able to answer simple queries. Uh -huh. Like tell me about Sebastian, some some person, but when it comes to like multi-op queries, uh -huh. still it was like not that optimal. So how how do you go about dealing with it in the future? As, um, yeah, for now, um, actually we are just at, at the beginning point. So, uh, like, um, are you using the graph rag or the text to cipher? Uh, graph rag. Okay. Um, so for now, the implementation is you know, just a low hanging fruit. So I'm, I'm the contributor on that. We have still a lot of uh, things to improve because we have strong assumptions on the graph schema. So, and uh, we have a lot to improve. And I'm, I'm happy to talk to you, you know, in details later. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay, I think. So, thank you. Here we go.